G'day friends. I started this channel back in December 2019 in hopes that it would be a bit like my website, Stringchronicity.net. A wonderful hodgepodge of the hobbies that I enjoy, from knitting and crafting, to needlework and historical sewing, to reading, writing, and music. I also wanted to do some video game streaming on Twitch, and somewhere between the advice for new streamers and the advice for new YouTubers, I wound up trotting down the path of becoming a gaming channel, which really wasn't my intent. I'm still gaming, just on Twitch, so if you want to join me for some Sims or Stardew Valley, or you just want to chat about knitting while I play, you can find me at twitch.tv slash stringchronicity. The Husbys brought home a nasty cold from the office, and then with the current apocalypse, I've been offline for the better part of a month and a half. It's given me time to think about what I want for the channel and what people are coming here to see. So today we're going to talk about lever knitting, which lines up really well with my current project. Every year I knit at least four pairs of socks, often five, sometimes six if I'm treating myself. That's one pair each for my parents, one pair each for my in-laws, a pair for the husbeast, and if I'm lucky, a pair for myself. That's if everything goes according to plan. I failed to make last year's Christmas deadline, and I had to get my dad's socks to him by his birthday. He has since told me he wants another three quarters of an inch on them, which, fine, I can rip those back. But, as it happens, we're starting off the project one pair of socks ahead. I'm an extreme introvert by nature, and I'm just as pleased as can be with the whole social distancing thing. While all of my friends were heading to the Twitters to talk about their anxiety, I finished a toque and picked up a pair of socks that I started before Christmas and finished those two. One pair down, five to go. Hopefully. As a quick trip to the yarn store is somewhat problematic right now, I'm shopping from my stash. I used to purchase sock yarn for myself on a whim, thinking I'd get an early start on the Christmas knitting, then selfishly hoard those skeins like a dragon, ducking out to the store sometime in September or October, hoping to buy sock yarn that was a bit more suitable for the recipients. Let's just say that with my hoarding tendencies, my stash probably has more choice than the yarn store when it comes to the sock yarn I need right now. That said, if you have the expendable income right now to purchase yarn, please do support your local or online small businesses. Michaels is doing curbside pickup, as are some of the shops local to me in Calgary, Alberta. My email indicates that the Loopy U, Blue Moon Fiber Arts, and Knit Picks are all still shipping as well, so now might be the time to make that order with your favorite indie dyers, or pick up a gift certificate for later. I knit at a fairly even gauge of 8 stitches per inch with 2.5mm Addy Turbo needles, and most of the folks I knit socks for tend to fit a sock that's 64 stitches around. This makes it easy to start with a knit 2 purl 2 cuff for 15 to 20 rounds. Somewhere I picked up the habit of using the German twist cast-on, and I use a slightly larger needle to give a little bit more stretch. I know my gauge because I've knit a lot of socks. A lot of socks. If you're fairly new to sock knitting, you might want to knit a plain tube of stockinette for a couple of inches to get an idea of your own gauge.
If I'm knitting a plain stockinette sock with relatively unisex colors like I'm doing here, I'll often wait until I'm finished the leg and cuff and I'm working on the foot to decide who it belongs to. Then I'll adjust the length of the foot to fit. Otherwise, when it comes to color, I err on the side of caution when knitting for the baby boomers in the family. The husbeast doesn't mind pink socks, but that doesn't mean either of our fathers won't roll their eyes at the notion. I'm fairly certain that this sock yarn was chosen for one of the dads. I've switched temporarily to my streaming camera so I can watch the monitor and make sure my hands aren't wandering off out of frame while I explain how to lever knit on circular needles. For this tutorial, I'm going to assume that you already know how to knit in purl, so you know which, which way to go into the stitch. I originally held the needles under my hands, and I found that my tension was somewhat erratic and I got tired and sore really easily, and my joints aren't what they used to be when I was a kid, so anything a little bit more ergonomic is awesome. I learned this technique by watching a couple of really old videos of Stephanie Pearl McPhee that some kind knitters uploaded to YouTube years ago. Actually, it, they weren't old at the time. Uh, anyhow, I'm not sure whether they're still available, as I understand she sometimes teaches classes on her methods, but this is the style that I've developed. She uses double pointed needles, and while managing four or five needles can at first be awkward, they can make things a bit faster once you get going. I, however, am a klutz who is prone to losing things if I'm not careful, For cir so circulars are not only easier for me to manage, it's exceptionally rare that I lose the other half of the needle. <laughs> she also lever knits using straight needles, and I figured out that technique as well, but I do vastly prefer to use circulars. Again, I'd hate to accidentally impale a member of my family on any of my knitting apparatus. So to tension the yarn, Bring the yarn between your pointer and middle fingers. You are keeping your project on the left, so it may help keep your ball of yarn on the right hand side. Loop it once around your middle finger, and then over your ring finger, and down between your ring finger and your pinky. Or at least I would if my pinky wasn't as short as it is. You can tension as much as you need to by looping around that ring finger. I usually loop it at least once. I found that it helped to practice winding the yarn through my fingers in the right order over and over again until it became familiar. It became a routine. So once again, in between middle finger and the pointer finger, around the middle finger, and over your ring finger, and loop as many times as you need. Next, because I usually knit magic loop style, what I do is I pull the needle into place, making sure that the working yarn is over top of the needle I'm going to be using. And I hold it between my left thumb and my pointer. Tension my yarn. And scooch that working needle into place between the thumb and the pointer finger on my right hand. What I do after that is to knit, lever the hand forward. And bring the yarn down and around the working needle. Let's see if I can get a little closer here. And push off. To purl, you're going to bring the yarn around to the front. In, same thing, just going in and around, down and around the needle, and moving off. Socks are a wonderful project to practice knitting and purling lever style, because if you're as stubborn as I am, you have at least 15 to 20 rounds, 
or 30 to 40 rows, per sock to get the technique down. If you're planning on switching from your current knitting style to a technique like this, I suggest that when you pick up your knitting, you start with the new method and work with it for at least 15 minutes before going back to your old way of knitting. That way you get used to the routine of picking up your knitting and using the new method right off the bat. Eventually, you just won't switch back to your old knitting technique. That's not to say you'll lose the ability to use your old method, it just won't seem as natural unless you switch back to it full time. It's useful to know a couple of different knitting methods. Stranded knitting, for instance, is often taught using the needles under the fingers in a traditional English style technique. I'm fortunate that one of my best friends is a continental knitter, so my stranded knitting technique is a combination of lever in the right hand and continental in the left. I did mention that one of the drawbacks of lever knitting is getting the fabric caught on the wall of your palm. Often, as with the hat I'm currently knitting, you can drape the fabric over your thumb and grip the working needle from the wrong side of the fabric. It only really becomes a problem when you're trying out things like the teeny tiny needles that were in vogue a while back. I had a set somewhere, but they've gone missing. The idea was that they were the same circumference as the sock, and you could just keep knitting around and around without stopping. No switching DPNs or having to pull through a magic loop bunny ear. It let you become a rudimentary knitting machine. You can't lever knit on these things, believe me, I tried. Going back to my old method of knitting worked, but it also brought back a lot of the problems I switched methods to correct. So back to lever knitting on magic loop for me. I find it's more enjoyable, really. So at the end of all of this, I'm getting ready to knit a flap and turn the heel on sock number one. I'd probably be closer to casting on sock number two if I hadn't gotten sidetracked by another project, but we can talk about that next time. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please click that thumbs up button down below. While you're at it, why not doink the subscribe button and ring the bell? That way you won't miss the next video and, eventually, the second part of our sock adventures. Thank you so much for dropping by, and I'm looking forward to sharing more of my woolly wanderings with you. I know it seems I took a hard left turn at Deligracy and wound up vaguely in the neighborhood of Bernadette Manor, but trust me, this is for the best. <laughs>